proposed a SUSQI framework, which is a practical framework for integrating sustainability with healthcare improvement. Um, it's shown in this table, so down the left hand side are elements that are common to all quality improvement initiatives. And then down the middle have recommended how sustainability can be usefully in integrated here. So just to work, talk through it briefly, um, when we come to set goals, first of all, we would explicitly include sustainability as a goal. Um, and the goal of sustainable QI would become to deliver care in a way that maximizes positive health outcomes through best use of environmental, social and financial resources. In quality improvement, it's really important not to jump to um, solutions and assume that you know the best thing to do um, and to begin by understanding how the system works currently. And that should include understanding where we are using environmental resources um, and social, res social assets as part of care. So this would involve everybody who's doing quality improvement becoming familiar with the idea that in the acute sector, um, the energy use in buildings, um, the use of equipment, often single use equipment, have a, a high contribution to the carbon footprint. In primary care, it's largely um, the use of pharmaceuticals, um, particularly inhalers, um, and understanding that waste disposal is a, only a small part of the picture, and we need to look at how we consume resources more generally. Um, thinking about the social impacts, so firstly, who are the social groups that are in, um, that are impacted by a service that we're working in? Um, there's the patients, of course, but there's also their carers, maybe dependents um, or family. There are the staff, um, also people in the local community and those people working in the supply chain, for example. And the, the way that we organise care can actually impact on the social circumstances, which is set out down the left here. Um, these are mostly derived from the social determinants of health. So just thinking about how we might be impacting on the social circumstances of these different groups. Um, for example, are patients and carers having to take a large amount of time out of work? Um, is uh, are we um, supporting people to participate in society um, and have social interactions with others which we know are really important for their health um, uh, are we affecting the, the health and well-being of staff in a positive way um, so we've, we've looked at the system we're understanding the system as it works currently and that might have highlighted some opportunities um, for change that we might not have thought of. So now we need to think about what are we going to do to improve things? Um, and I'm sure there would have been some ideas that would have come up in the, in the previous process, but it's also really helpful um, to use the principles of sustainable clinical practice we found to generate, systematically generate ideas. And this can help us not to miss important opportunities. Um, so have we thought about, have we taken all of the opportunities for preventative care within our service? Um, I've just got some examples here from mental health. Um, are we educating people about conditions? Are we intervening early? Um, what could we do to improve the, the availability of peer support um, and get patients involved in providing that? Um, what can we um, do to streamline pathways? Are our pathways um, a recovery based in this, in this case? So that, that means not just responding to crises, but actually building long-term um, uh, mental health and well-being and resilience. Um, uh, are there um, options in terms of the way that we investigate or treat conditions uh, that are lower carbon than others, but still clinically effective? Um, and are there things we can do to improve um, the resources that we use to travel, to, to heat our buildings, to uh, the, the choice of equipment and so forth? So we generate a number of ideas and then we'd obviously need to prioritise among those. 
And having um, tested and implemented some changes through this, the quality improvement process, um, we'd then be looking to measure the overall impact that we've had um, on the goal that we set at the start. Um, and so here again, we'd be looking now to try and measure some of these things, measuring the outcomes for the, the patients and populations concerned, and that will depend on, on what it is, that, um, the area that you're working in, um, and measuring environmental, social, and financial impacts. I'm just gonna talk briefly about measuring environmental and social impacts. So we often use a carbon footprint to measure environmental impact, and we know that's not the whole story, but it is, it is useful, it's something that we can calculate and end up with a number. And the way that we do that, so one, one way would be to capture the, some data on the resources that we're using in a process, kind of before and after, and look at the changes. And in practice in a quality improvement project, you may not have made um, changes to all of these different elements. So you may, for example, um, have made changes that have a big effect on travel, but haven't really changed the um, equipment that you're using, in which case you wouldn't need to measure everything. Um, but you, you would look to get data on the resources that you have used, and that would be in the different units. So it would be distance for travel and often in medical supplies and non-medical supplies, it would, uh, we would be capturing that in pounds. <clears throat> and then there are emissions factors out there, um, which you could be signposted to, um, which would allow you to convert your energy use, for example, into carbon by multiplying it by this emissions factor. And you would get an answer in carbon CO2 equivalents. And if you did that for all the different resource categories and added them up, that would be your carbon footprint. So it can be labour intensive to get the data, but it's not a complicated process. Um, the other approach, which could be a lot quicker, um, if what's, what you've done is changed the pathway and you, can, um, and you can capture that in terms of units of healthcare activity, um, then you can um, use emissions factors that have been worked out, um, for example, for a given emergency department visit, you could, multiple, um, you, you could use the emissions factor for that um, and add up um, the old pathway and the new pathway and compare the difference. Um, what about social impacts? Here there's not a um, fixed method that's been um, universally adopted, it's something that we all need to work on, um, but we can still try and measure things. I think that the important thing first of all is to have prioritised which are the social impacts which are really meaningful for your system and, and for the changes that you've made. And some of those might be good and some might be bad, Steve, so it's important to capture both. Um, and then look at the impact area. Um, uh, so if, if, for example, if that it, the service has, the change has had a big impact on carers' ability to remain in work, um, then we could look at, well, how can we actually measure that? Would it be the number of different people who remain in employment or is it time that they're missing from work um, and so forth? Finally, sustainability can be applied to the process of any QI project. It, is, it, could, it should become a core part of, of the process for everyone. But it can also be a really important motivating factor for many health book, healthcare professionals and it can stimulate creative thinking and it can really inspire people to work in particular projects that may be closely related to improving sustainability such as re re reducing over prescribing or pharmaceutical waste so i think both approaches are valid and there are resources out there accessible to all that can be freely downloaded from our website um, to help people through the different steps of their project.